water, one of the most important elements of living, is used in many different ways and with this comes the task of managing it. A small percentage of our water supply goes towards recreational uses, but with the growing population of people, its demand is on the rise. Every management decision has an effect on other aspects. With this, we must find a way to co-manage our recreational water uses so people are able to have their fun and the river's ecosystems are able to flourish. There are over 3,000 dams in California alone. These structures provide water storage, hydropower, and are used for flood control. The flow of the rivers below these dams are completely regulated by the dam operators. They decide how much and how often water is released from the reservoirs. Here are hourly pictures of the unregulated Clavey River on the left and the regulated main stem of the Tuolumne River on the right. It is clearly seen here that the water levels in the Tuolumne fluctuates every day at quite a magnitude, whereas the water levels in the Clavey seems to stay pretty constant. The increased water levels seen in the regulated river above are referred to as boating flows. Every day, water is released from the dams so the rafters have high enough flows to make it down the river. These releases start in April with sporty flows of 2,000 to 4,000 cubic feet per second and usually extend into September with normal flows of 1,200 to 1,500 cubic feet per second. The natural flowing Sierra and rivers, like the Clavey, experience a spring snowmelt recession curve in their hydrographs, whereas the regulated rivers experience a drastic drop in their flows with not much of a recession at all. This spring snowmelt recession is critical for many species since their reproduction timing is cued in on certain times of the recession curve that are most suitable for their young to survive. Without this gradual decrease in the water flows, these species have a hard time surviving in the constant fluctuating regulated rivers. Another major recreational water use is fishing. There is a misconception when it comes to fishermen's wants. Most people would believe that fishermen would favor the unregulated, free-flowing streams since the fish habitats have less stress and better spawning grounds. But, surprisingly, a lot of fishermen favor fishing below dams and regulated streams. The unregulated streams might get down to critically low flows since they don't have any water supplied to them. And with this, the water temperature will increase and the native fish who favor cold water will leave these streams and the non-native species will invade. Eric Holmes from the UC Davis Center for Watershed Sciences touches on this. I spend a lot of time out at the North Fork American, the unregulated river, just enjoying the ecosystem and the water temperature and swimming and the beauty of it. Um, I spend more time looking for big fish on the re in the regulated system. Um, I, I'm really looking for you know, those cold water species. I'm, I'm a trout specialist and I really like the brown trout and the Middle Fork American River with the cold water temperatures throughout the year provides that habitat to grow really large fish. Um, and it's something not a lot of people really know. <laughs> Hunting and bird watching on refuges are another recreational water use that is big in California. After our water system became dammed and completely altered, 90% of the wetlands were lost in California. And the regulated rivers were no longer able to naturally create new wetlands. When waterfall migrate down south for the winter, they relied on these wetlands for survival. This is where the refuges start to come in. Refuges are highly managed habitats that mimic the lost habitat that the waterfowl need. Just in the Sacramento Refuge Complex, there's over 35,000 acres that are managed to keep these waterfowl habitats available. An important role in the refuges is water management. Refuges have seasonal marshes that are drained during late spring and summer which encourage plant growth on the moist soil left behind. In the fall, the marshes are reflooded, which supply wildlife with seeds and plants and provide the waterfowl with their mimicked wetlands. The permanent ponds are also drained every three to five years to recycle nutrients and manage undesirable vegetation. These highly managed areas supply habitat for over 300 bird species and many other animals. All of this is possible because of water diversion. With dam relicensing coming up, major water management decisions will have to be made. Unfortunately, it is nearly impossible to give every water user what they need and want. We need to come up with ways of co-managing our water uses. In the recreation portion of our water supply, 
altering the flows released from the dams to mimic the spring recession curve could be beneficial for the rivering ecosystems and the rafters would still get boating flows just earlier in the year. It is possible to be able to maintain all the water uses. It's just going to involve some giving and taking. With a well thought out water management plan, we can make this happen.